ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, after so much great speeches, I always get shy. I will try to do my best because I don't think I can be the speaker in front of them. It's good for you to know that we haven't had any kind of action in our presentation. So if you see any correlation between those slides, just call it that we were mentally connected. <laughs> Good. Most of you, the last 10 to 20 years, are asking yourself, what is going on? You feel something is not right. You do the utmost to make it right. You make it today, and then tomorrow you have to do it all over again. You went, your parents told you, go find a safe and secure job. And then you are hearing now about increasing the age of retirement. You are hearing this, you are doing this. You are asking yourself, what is going on? I am trying to put this together for you guys to try to find an answer. Try to project what might lie ahead of us. Sometimes I have given a very strong presentation in this stage. One of my first presentations, I predicted the growth. I predicted the housing price. I was wrong. I took a little copy of that uh, presentation. It was March 15, 2007. I uh, created a presentation for a rotary group somewhere abroad. And the title was, Are you prepared for the big crash of the housing market? People laughed at me. The, the fact is that the presentation is available today. When you watch the presentation, how the housing market has crashed. By 90% it crashed. While it was um, predicted in the presentation, I had a presentation, I had a presentation, when it became 50, oh, I'm just a When it became 50, I gave the presentation on the University of Tampa. And uh, it was October the 15th, 13th, 2005, I gave, a I gave a presentation and then I asked the people in Florida, are they ready to sell their houses? Or are they, are they prepared for it to get auctioned? The guy stood up in the yard and the guy told me this literally. Uh, sir, sorry, excuse me, but this is Florida. Uh, housing prices have never gone down. Uh, I said, okay, you're right. I understand the planet of the economy. So, by chance, Florida may lie on Pluto. But um, that you will be right, because that planet uh, economy will not be applied to Florida. May we exchange business cards? Because then two things will happen in the coming five years. Uh, Florida is on Pluto, or it's on planet Earth. And then, if it is on, on Pluto, you will call me, and if it's on planet Earth, I call you. Both, of course, you know how the situation crystallizes. Okay, so today I'm trying to do something similar. I'm trying to predict the coming five to ten years. I took a lot of um, time in this presentation, so the content, maybe it's a one hour presentation, but the time I took to make this because sitting here at the Central Bank is the center of financial knowledge, I have to give a presentation that is state of the art. So I try to do that. Okay. <laughs> So what are we going to discuss? We we'll first start with the question. I, I comply three questions just to put you to think. You don't have to answer these questions. Maybe you you find the answer of these questions during the presentation or the discussion. Start three start questions. Then, um, so the global financial landscape. How is the global financial landscape today? So uh, today, I make this presentation on March the 8th. I will give you a view of how the global financial situation, official data of, of IMF and uh, World Bank. So if those data are wrong, they are not mine. If you have an iPad with you, I can give you the site where you can find those data. So don't blame it on me if those data are not in line with what you think they are. Um, then we're going to talk about the big economic shift. 
to what is really happening of what has happened the last 20 years because I compare what is happening right now with a, with a lady who is pregnant. Because in the first six months of the pregnancy, you don't see visually any change in the belly or the shape of the lady. It is the last three months. So, um, in my opinion, what is going on is already cooking for 20 years. So let's say if we compare it with the baby, it is the, it's the six month of pregnancy. So the last three months before Labor Day, um, we are going to face right now. So we're going to see what is happening. And the, the coming, in accordance with my analysis, the coming uh, four years will be very, very critical. That will be the years of the complete shakeout are the years of the complete opportunity. And uh, uh, I use this analogy with a, a good friend of mine, Professor Rotman at Erasmus, he's professor in transition theory. He wrote a book in the eye of the storm. I'm just quoting him here. So if you go on the on your on Facebook or Professor Rotman, he is also one of the supporters of Green Town Curaçao. He wrote a book, his latest book is called It in the Eye of the Storm. And then, if we have an eye of a storm, there should be a storm. So let's take a look to that storm. And then, people who know me, I have always tried to make for myself, design my own formula. So I designed a formula for today's presentation that you will not find in any economic books. But I try to explain with my formula, which I said, inflation plus deflation is stagflation. And, uh, and then we're going to see if my formula I designed for this special occasion is right, and if it is right, what it will lead. And then the change. How will it happen? Who will it affect? What? How will it change the world? And then we're going to the end. I will have five slides, which I want to throw something in the public for them to think about. Start questions. Question one. How do you see the future coming three to five years? Because it's very important, because you have to act like the world you think is going to happen. Do you think booming? The best lies ahead of us. Moderate growth, increase of wealth per capita. Will be no difference with the previous three to five years. Decline in prosperity, or economic and financial collapse. Really. Which of those five scenarios do you think is most, most obvious for what we are going to see for the coming three to five years? Question two, your income versus your expenses. By making a career, because we already have graduates, we are making a career of the business. How do you think your purchasing power measured in hard assets will be in 2018? Improvement of your purchasing power, similar to the current one, Decrease in purchasing power. We all have a house. What is your opinion about the value of your house measured in hard asset by 2018? Much higher than its current value. Higher than its current value. Similar to the current one. Lower than the current value. Or much lower than the current value. the global financial landscape. What is official, what I could have found officially was debt, public debt, government debt. On April the 8th, the total 
public debt on planet Earth was $53 trillion. As, as, as uh, Jeremy has introduced me as an engineer, when I started studying engineering in 1973, something like trillions were things from astrophysical. So you determine the, the, the distance between stars and trillion and light years. Now today, we are talking about depth of trillions, like it is peanut. Can you imagine yourself, staples and bills of $100, how big this total global public debt is? If yes, how do you think it can be repaid? But let's break the figures down. The top most indebted countries and the, the percentage of debt to GDP. As I remember, the, the lady kind of said that it's acceptable 50. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I see powerful Japan 245. So what you, what you, what you, what you see here is that Japan by five times is worse than the standard. If, if we consider 100% debt to GDP to bankrupt, then we can say Japan is 2.5 times bankrupt. It is public debt. What you see here, they are all, with the exception of Singapore, Oh, sorry. People told you we should be Singapore. Wait a minute. Something is wrong here. I don't want to live in a country with 107% debt to GDP. Um, they are all big countries. If I go to the other side, the sovereign wealth, with the exception of China, all of them are small countries. What is this telling you? Will small become beautiful again? If you have read, read the book of Farid Zaharias, The Post-American World, when Obama was in election in 2008, you saw him reading that book. Farid Zaharias predicted in that book that at the end of the big shift, prosperity will return back only to small countries. If you go back into history, the richest countries on earth were the state states, Rome, uh, uh, Milano, the small countries. If, if I watch this and I just take out China, those countries that have no debt are small. I gave a presentation once to a TV interview in a country, and I lightly made my own formula. So I said this, and let's see if you agree with me. If these are the small countries that are that have cash, these are the big countries. If you give a mouse food of an elephant, the mouse, you will have a mouse plague. If you give elephant food of the mouse, both will die. So are these countries able to save those? I gave another presentation. You can go to my site. Three weeks ago, they interviewed me about Crimea. I said, it's a comedy. It's a joke. Because they can put no sanction on Russia. Why? Simple. Simple. If Russia with 500 billion in research in US dollar just dump 10%, there will be no dollar left in value. I'm sorry, excuse me. Your Italian dollar is back to that. Okay, so it's just comedy. And, and because it's just for, public, it's, it's for, it's for public consumption, people who don't understand we need the figures. Obama and all those Western European countries are trained, blah, 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 blah. That's not what the man said. That's what the man does. Social economic shift. 
In the course of the history of mankind, people have gone to five stages of social economic development. Why is that important? Because you can only gain prosperity if what you're doing fits in a social economic age. Okay? Because otherwise you cannot gain. So it's very important for everything you do to understand if it fits. So in the course of, the, of, of civilization, People went from, from the hunting age to agriculture age to industrial age to information age. Then now we are in the knowledge age. What do you see? Every change in ages, what happened? The human capital factor increased. It's more difficult to do agriculture than to hunt. It's more difficult to do industrial activity than to, and so on and so on. So it means that education that creates human capital must understand which, at which age we are living in in order to proactively create the people the economy needs. So we are living in the current knowledge age. So what are the how such an economy looks like. So this is this is a pie chart. In the, so you, it should be 55% of the economy should be in a service, 10% industrial, 33% knowledge, and only 2% um, agriculture. I know politicians will tell you we have to plant and to eat. No, my my friend, it's a very important rule in economics make it or buy it. And where is the decision falling? It's about price. If I can create knowledge charging people $100, $500 an hour, do I have to use that time to go farming? No. Okay. So, in this knowledge change, you have the abilities, your skills, and your knowledge has to fit. And then, in accordance with the CIA World Factory, these are the criteria that your economy should function with if you want to have the chance to have a certain level of prosperity. What are your personal skills? What skills and abilities must I have to be competitive in this current marriage? positive approach and solution-oriented mindset. I always, when I give lecture for salespeople, I say to them, most of you are Mr. No. Become Mr. Yes. Successful people never say no. They conditionalize yes. Okay? Because you are hired because you are the solution. I don't hire somebody that tells me what cannot be done. Would you? Would you hire somebody to tell you what cannot be done? No. Critical thinking and doing, and most important critical, is autocritical. Michael Jackson, the man in the mirror. Before starting blaming anybody, watch closely in the mirror. Your ICT skills, why is that important? Because ICT, information age, is the carrier of the knowledge age. It's the information age that will carry, will pull the knowledge age. So you're, you cannot develop in the knowledge age if you lack ICT skills. No, Mr. Yes, your ability flexibility, how, how, how quick are you to adapt yourself to new technologies, to new way of living, how flexible are you? It's your mindset. Your entrepreneurial skills. People are complaining. I will give an interview at the radio station at the, and we drove by, there was two pushes, 6,000 people. And people are complaining we have youth unemployment. I haven't seen any 
of those youth unemployed with the laser, with the 3D printer, standing there with the boot, ask the tourists, would you want to customize? So for of course, I haven't seen that. But they are complaining that they are, they are unemployed. So the camera is also your creativity. Be creative. There are new skills. Skills you don't teach, they don't teach you at school. Very important. The world doesn't start at Oastburg and at, at, at West Point. It's much bigger than that. Every time you start complaining things doesn't go right, ask yourself how much percentage of your income comes from the planet Earth instead of from the pond. Your mobility, how mobile are you? Is your infrastructure set in such a way that you can sit in an airplane work with all your files? When you are abroad, wherever you are, are all your files? If I enter your office, do I see a file cabinet? Because if you have a file cabinet in your office, every time you're going abroad, there's a second plane that has to land behind you to bring all your files. I travel a lot. There's no plane following me with all my cabinets. Is this you? Do you fit this profile? Country. The country that wants to be prosper and prosper in the knowledge of our <laughs> Education, not any education, ahead of the curve. Education will be key. Ahead of the curve. Not the education from yesterday. Education of tomorrow. In this modern age, very important critical success factor is the pride, penetration, and, and, and percentage of population having access to high bandwidth. Give your kid an I give your kid of 10 years an iPad. And in two years, she, he or she is smarter than you. Every time I give lecture in university, I always tell my students, sorry. I cannot teach you anything. I can just try to be a conversation leader. And it's true. Good governance. Very, very, very important. Capital in, uh, investment, foreign investment, will not go to a country that is not good enough governed. Budget and fiscal discipline. If the country doesn't have budget and fiscal discipline, then you will get raised increase of taxes increase or devaluation of currency. Business don't want to go in such a country. Or you will get that they will stop the, the, the outflow of foreign exchange. And you don't want that. You don't want to be that allies that stick with all those dollars in you know which country. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fly to such a country like that. So again, if you're going to fly without mingle with politics to a country like that, don't ask me to pay taxes to help you. Yeah. Because I don't do business in that country. And your ease of doing how easy is it to get permit, to get the right people I need? How is the legal system protecting me when I want to do business? Why? Because business is the core of development. critical success factors for the people So, like I said, it's the most important is the Human Development Index. And there's a section of the United Nations, UNDP, that every year produces statistics. So I'm going to show you the statistics of UNDP. So the, for last year, they haven't produced the one from, from this year yet. The 
number one country with the highest human development index is Norway, followed by Australia, Sweden, and look who's that, the Netherlands. The Dutch Kingdom, people are not aware of the power of the Dutch Kingdom. Germany, Ireland, Switzerland. But if we follow that list, you see most of them are European countries. So when the Italian Bloomberg that Europe will go down, laugh at them. Because if knowledge is the most critical success factor, those countries with the best knowledge will be able to find the solution. You don't see America in the top 10. These are the criteria of good governance. Okay? These are the criteria that people watch to when trying to determine how good a country is governed. Okay? But World Bank has created users, six of them, and produced yearly their good governance index for the whole world. Okay? The criteria of World Bank are these six. Voice and accountability, political stability, government effectiveness, regulatory quality, rule of law, control of corruption. This are in every DDR website. You can go to that website and there you'll find from every country on earth, you'll find the latest report and also the development. You can see how the good government has developed in that country. This is the top five. Again, what do you see here? Small is beautiful. In the, in the break, somebody asked me, what was the best country you went with? I said, New Zealand. If you've ever been to New Zealand, you don't want to leave. You, if you see how people are together, it's a combination of human development index and, and good government, corporate, public, at home. Again, if you see small countries, the, the bottom, is the bottom five. But what is most interesting for us is how do we rank? How do we rank with our competitors? Who, with who are we competing in the primary? It's very important, like Candice did. Put those. So I will show you not my figures, world bank figures. So the highest good conference, it goes from one zero to one hundred. So, okay, so let's say Barbados has 93 on the scale of one of hundred. Okay. Followed by the Bahamas, then you have Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba Beach as well, French Guyana, then four relatives, the Curacao and St. Martin, and Martinique and the Virgin Islands are together. And then we have Costa Rica, Puerto Rico together, Grenada. Cuba, Brazil, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Suriname, Panama, Colombia, Guyana, Dominican Republic, Venezuela. That airline that flew to Venezuela trying to get your tax to pay for its debt. Have they watched this? No. <laughs> because you can predict it. You can predict it. It's this. If, if, I, if I see this as a good government right here for a country, it's seven on a scale from zero to 100, <laughs> So what do you see? Who are we competing with? Our, our competitor, when, when, it, when I do business abroad, our competitors are Colombia, Jamaica, uh, Colombia, Panama, and Trinidad. Uh, so Aruba is not really a competitor, only, only, only with the tourism. You see that we rank, and this is 2012, and most of us can remember what happened that year. Okay, so I, 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 I think that if, we, if the 2013 data are out, it, the, the, the picture would be brighter. It's a similar 
like uh, like Candice said, when SMB, you guys have a good temper, so we are complaining. Good complaining is good because you watch in the mirror. It's always good how others see you. Because when you are complaining, it means you are autocritical. A very, very good point in our culture is that we are autocritical. And you can explain it from philosophy also. In philosophy, they said you have two types of people. Land people and sea people. So for example, here in Holland, what is Holland? Has became such an important power because the, the sea side of Holland. But now in the last 20 years, well, Holland became more land, land people. So they have to change their land. So it's our sea mentality that makes us autocritical. Ease of doing business. We are not at that scale here because they only measure independent count. It is also very important. So that is also World Bank. That is the, the criteria of World Bank using to get you um, in the ease of doing business. And this is the landscape. This is the landscape. Again. Green is good. Red is bad. So you're complaining you're not getting your 53 million. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And you're expanding your flights to Suriname. Wait a minute. So the next storm is, is around the corner. You don't expand to Peru. You don't expand to, to Colombia. In the top, if you go to the side of Rotary, there are 188 uh, countries. Venezuela is the second place of the last. Suriname is on 176. And we want to extend our ties with these countries. I, they asked me, you can also go to that, they asked me about, uh, that was the second country I had visited. That I, it's, it's Uruguay. My son was in Uruguay, his girlfriend. Uruguay, this is, this, this, if you go to the good governance site, Uruguay has a higher good governance ranking than France. Can you imagine why they attract foreign investment? Go and find the report Chile. Uruguay, uh, Chile is also higher than France, but Uruguay after that dictatorship, they, they, they changed the way the government is being done there. Today, the good governance ranking of Uruguay is higher than the one of France. I'm not talking about Italy, Spain, and all those countries. So, so the, the, the level of governance in Uruguay and in Chile are on European standards. How many flights do we, how often do we fly to Uruguay from Curaçao? There is the internet landscape. If you go to the site, where we get this one, very important. If you watch from Alaska and Patagonia, we are number four ranked. And you know who sort you were number three until a year ago. You know who surpassed us? Think twice. Uruguay. Good governance. Because when you have good governance, you give your people access to cheap internet. Because the government has nothing to be afraid of. You empower your people. So number one is America, followed by number two is Canada. Number three in the whole continent is Uruguay. Number four is Curaçao, and number five is Chile. No other country. And then you have Mexico, and those countries we are competing with are far away in bandwidth and bandwidth penetration. In the eyes of the storm, that is uh, some research of Professor Rothman, so we got what they say thanks to him.
for the development of Erasmus. The big question most people are asking themselves was the year 2008, the beginning, the peak or the end of the financial crisis that caused the big recession. Everything in life is function like a Gaussian curve. So if Professor Rothman is right that I adapted this theory, then the period we have went through 2011 to 2013 can be called the eye of the storm. In the eye of the storm, the sky is clear, everything looks nice. So then the financial crisis landscape, most probably the eye should look like this. It was the beginning. We just went to the eye of the storm. And then the storm will be over in 2020. So if we are right, then the worst part of the financial crisis is ahead of us. Because everybody that is in the case know that the aftermath, after when the wind turns from direction, yes, then then you will be hit. Again, for the humanity, I hope Professor Lampard and myself we are wrong. <laughs> if we are right, how do we base it? scientifically that we are right, that the storm will start, the real storm, that will wash away everything that's that destructive, we wash it away. How do we explain that? We explain this within three long-term economic cycles. The long-term economic cycle is very important because common people have a short memory. We, we can, you can remember that you forgot, if you want to live in Holland, you forgot to buy your winter jacket for last summer. But if you have a long cycle, you forget about it. And as an engineer, in the past, I used to teach mathematics. And the first time I was confronted with long cycle, it was because when I was a kid, I'm 58 years of age, they had a song in October. It's called the October month is the month of flowers because it was raining in October. And then in the 80s, it was dry here. No rain in October. And then again, something in 98, we saw raining again, every October weather. And then I was giving a lecture. I encountered what they call solar wind, the cycle of solar wind of 18 years that change weather on planet Earth. So I correlated so that wet October years of my youth, the dry October years of the 80s, and then the wet October years that we just have had with long cycle. Okay, but it is too long, 18 years, that people remind it. So if you have long cycles, people don't remind it. And these long cycles, let's see which are the three most important economic cycles. Cycle number one is the housing market cycle. So here we are again. Here we are again. So they throw stones at me in 2007 because based on the housing market cycle and then again at, I did it again in the aula of the University of the Antilles. November 2007 I gave a lecture and you can get a copy of it. The title of that lecture was The End of the Middle Class in the West, starting January 2008. And then I predicted how the housing market will take down the banks. Okay? I based it on the housing market cycle. The cycle of paper asset versus hard asset. We call it the cycle of psychologically based assets versus the cycle of hard assets. And then we have the cycle of the Russian economist Kondratiev. Kondratiev linked it, uh, technological development with economic prosperity and economic fall. All these cycles are long-term cycles. Let's start first with the housing market cycle. 
So the question is, the perfect storm always occurs, and as a, somebody who's good in engineering, we call it in the in, in Dutch standard hollow. When you have more waves and they interfere together, you get the standard hollow. So they oscillate into extremes. So the question is, Will these three cycles interfere? If yes, when? It's pure mathematics. It's no voodoo. I'm just doing <laughs> mathematics analogy. How's the market cycle? The whole the residential house and market cycle has a is a follows the inverse of the interest rate curve. Why? 90% of all housing are financed with third party capital. So, if the interest is low, housing will be booming. Everybody thinks they have a PhD degree in finance and they go to take a mortgage to, to finance their home. If the interest rate increase, then they cannot pay their, their mortgage because they have the notary who passed the deed, have to explain them all the sentence in the deed. And it became that that mortgage is what, what they call a uh, uh, adjustable mortgage, uh, 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 adjustable rate, rate mortgage, uh, yes. And then you, you, you realize that. So it has a periodical, it has, it's like, like a curve, with a periodical time of 18 years. Over the last 100 years, it every time happened again. So you have 18 years interest cycle, that's the inverse of it, is the housing market cycle. So the question was, for me, what was the previous peak? The previous peak was in 1990. So if this is right, I have to add 18 to it. It will mean that 2008, more or less, will be the peak. This is how the curve is right now. In mathematics of planet Earth, and of course it will not be applicable in Curaçao, so don't you worry. How do you find the next dot? They call it extrapolation. So you can extrapolate the next dot, but you can also extrapolate the next bottom. If you took a mortgage here, you will not like mathematics. <laughs> Don't hate me, I hate mathematics. Okay? If you think that interest rates will not go up in Curaçao, ask Candace what they will do when Yellen increased interest rates in America. Don't ask me. Do you think we are back to the dollar and they increase interest rates in America and they will not increase it here? How, what are the chances that they will increase interest rates? Interest rates in America is zero. The lowest possible interest rates ever. So it can only go up. <laughs> Have you thought about that? When you just build your nice house with a lot of wings? So most probably, so yes, forget about it, it's the housing price. Measured in gold. So you see the same thing. What you see here is what we call the bad tag. You see that here happening in the cat. So you see also not only measured in paper dollars, also measured in gold, the price of your house is decreasing. And you see the bad trap here. So always have the bad trap because when in the eye of the storm, people think that everything is right and they get the, what they call the bear trap. And then it goes boom. Okay, so here's the price of house measured in silver. You see, again, the price, you should have sold your house in 1999. If you sold have sold your house in 1999, you would have get the best price of your house measured in gold, bottle of cola, and measured in gasoline. Because people tend to measure it in paper dollars. Things that devalue it every year. You have to measure it in hard assets. Okay. Then we have the cycle of 
psychology based asset rather than art asset. In time that everybody gets for free a PhD degree in finance. Then um, I, I, was, I was driving in New York uh, in 1999, and the taxi driver was asking me, what will Yahoo stock do today? That is the time to run. When everybody is predicting sunshine, it's time to buy your umbrella. And when everybody is predicting rain, it's time to throw your umbrella away. So I, I'm telling you as an investor with 30 years of experience. Okay. Okay, so when paper excel, when everybody is fixating the growth, what about if you thought growth have returned, but we were in the eye of the storm? When people realize that that is not true. Paper will burn and hard acid will excel. It happened over and over again. Here's the cycle of what we call the doll to gold ratio, which is, I gave a lecture in, at the university also about that in 2009. Doll to gold ratio, predicting it to go down. You see, that this, this is the side where paper acid excel. This is the time if you could ask your parents what was the most value here. If you don't remember, interest rates was here, let's say 22%. That's why it was done. Because interest rate kills everything in psychological value. It will kill your pension because your pension has invested all the money in paper assets and there cannot be two rates. So if the rate interest rate tomorrow is 20% or higher, buy buy your pension. Okay. So you see here the bear trap again? Let us see the bear trap. We go down. So if you go to history, it always happened in the course of history. The peak, the bottom. The peak, the bottom. I think they the peak, this was the time for you to sell your house. So the chart shows that the curve most probably will bottom between 2016 and 2020. You can, the problem is namely all those curves, they are not symmetric. You have the first lag and the second leg. The slope of the second leg, that is the B curve of, you see the first leg, and the symmetric, it can be asymmetric with the small first leg and the large big leg or vice versa. But one thing always is the same. After the point of inflection, the slope is, hard, is, is bigger. Comparison with the lady who is pregnant, if six months of pregnancy is the point of inflection, after that, it's boom. Okay? So, that is the B cycle. And then, then we have the other one, you see again? The next period. The first part, the slope is mild. <coughs> then, the slope is shorter. Then, what's the cycle of the IT bubble? The, the, all those IT stocks went mild up and then boom. Now this is a cycle we are in right now. This is not from here. Something I copy from because I, I have access to database of university. This, you see 2013 or 14. So apparently we went through the slow part of the cycle. The slow slope. So now that is we will go to the final search. So, so it means that all those changes in the, in the coming years will happen fast. Don't go to the internet. Watch how Paul Volcker's American president, Central Bank, how he raised interest rates. Can you imagine a Central Bank president raised it, it by after one meeting with 6%? Can, can you imagine that happened to you with your mortgage now? 
22% must be interested in American energy. Then we have the conductive rate. Conductive rate is a, is a, is a is, 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 is visualized, it's a, it's, a, it's a cycle of 64 years. A visualize of how technological innovation first create boom, and due to the mankind, people, common people, always balance between greed and fear. So the greed will create the fear. Because when the innovation started, you will get always overinvestment, which will create the burst. In the course of since 1800, there were five conductive the first one. And the conductive wave had four stages. The stage of prosperity, the stage of recession, the stage of depression, and near start the new wave. The conductive one is the first industrial revolution. Then you have conductive two, the railroad and engine. Then you have conductive three, the age of steel, electricity, and internal combustion. Then conductive four, the war and post-Suburbia. And then conductive five is the post-era in ICT revolution. Okay. The question is, where are we now? We are now in the recession phase. That's why things do feel like Heading for depression. The question is, where more or less? when we hit the bottom, the, deep, the deepest part of the depression. Yes, somewhere about 20, 10, 18, 20, 20. So, with the housing market cycle, the dollar to gold ratio, and the contractive side of the bottom, all three together between 2016 and 2020, mm -hmm. We can hope that the severe crisis will hit us more or less between 2016 and 2020. Again, you might laugh at me like it did in 2007. We will exchange this discuss. <laughs> This, of course, that doesn't include, because it can change with wars and social policies, it doesn't include that. On top of that, humanity will be confronted in the coming 20 years with this additional crisis. Peak production of all commodities. and platinum group of materials. Why is that important? Everybody is telling you to go green. In order the most important element in going green is silver. For all your solar, if there is no silver, there cannot be solar panels. If the price of silver is $100 per troy ounce. You cannot pay to put solar panels on your roof. Platinum and palladium from the platinum group. If you have a gasoline car, the catalyzer in your car is from palladium, precious metal palladium. If you have a diesel car, it's from platinum. If you talk with somebody in the oil industry, and they have that Isla also works, they have a plant called platformer. Platformer is a derivation of the word platinum and reform. What are they doing at the platformer plant? All oil refineries have that because the most expensive component is iso octane. And by using platinum as a catalyzator, you create from Methane up to butane, you create isobutane. And that catalyst is being consumed. If you go to the go on the internet, 
and the most scarcest element in the F crust, you find is all the platinum group of element. Okay, so if there are no more silver, no more platinum group of material, no green energy. And then, for the other part of green energy, the solar is about the magnet. The, if you, and, and people see those things, they don't compute. We have, we have two windmill particles. Have you noticed they replace 10 windmills with five? Have you asked yourself why? Have, have we reduced, has the production of energy been reduced? No, the magnets in those new windmills are from thallium. It's a rare earth element that was not known 20 years ago when they built those first windmills. And that, 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 that magnet is more stronger, so it produces, the rotation energy can produce more electricity that five windmills produce more than ten. So what will happen? Oh, sorry, we have a problem. 90% of our thalalia is in China, and they don't export them. One of the best countries I've visited in my life is New Zealand. Most people don't know New Zealand is for food, but Saudi Arabia is for oil. So then you should ask yourself, what does a loaf of bread cost you in Oakland? I just came from New Zealand. When I go to the grocery, what do I pay for a loaf of bread in the country that feeds the world? Because that might be an indication what you're going to pay for your loaf of bread. If you buy two kipashi, you pay seven New Zealand dollar ten. That is the price of bread in the country that fits the world. Amen. Fresh water. Our body is for 80% water. So if we pollute our nest, we have to recycle it in order to stay alive. We cannot, we cannot save on food and water. Demographic cliff. Very important. It is, a, it's a, it is scientifically proven, and those of you that are my age or older can notice that. The peak, the peak in your spending happened on average around your 47 years of age. So your, your, your spending improves, increased until 47, and then it declines. So very important in the community is when the majority of the population has reached 47 years of age. Japan was the first country, Japan has no immigration, that has the baby boomers immediately after the 1945. So it means that Japan spending peaked in 1991. It was the same year that the Nikkei ate 35,000 pounds. I was in Japan in 1991. All real estate in Tokyo was more worth it than the whole real estate in California. What is real estate? in Japan cost today? What is the Nikkei today? Went to the top of the spending curve. If your economy is 73% consumer and your consumer past peak, your internal consumption will decline. The demographic cliff. I wish everybody good luck that has contributed to any pension fund. 
you will remember this presentation. studying law or get your MBA degree. Of course, they don't listen. Okay. And now they are all complaining that they have asked that way. I, I predicted, yeah, or they can tell you, I, I, I predicted that it will happen. Ask, ask. <laughs> pollution, pollute our death, and then it will happen, and then, that The rule is no different. That, that we can not repay. It means the following. If you can not repay your debt, you have two options. Only two. Either you default or you inflate it away. By the way, in case you don't know, your pension fund has bought these debts. So which of the solutions do you prefer? For the country from which you pension fund bought the debt to default or for it to inflate it away. If you don't believe me, go to the meeting of your pension fund and ask them to show you the, 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 the pie chart of their investment. Inflation plus Deflation is stagflation. That is the inflationary cycle. That happened is going to start after the 2008. We started here. And this is continuing. We are, why haven't you seen inflation yet? Because every time they change the rule of measuring the inflation. People are very good at fooling you. They create a new term for inflation. Or do you believe that our inflation is 2%? Do you believe that? <laughs> the, the core, the core inflation is 2. It's called in Dutch current inflation. What is core inflation? It's the real inflation minus inflation of, of food and energy. Great! I will take everything out that goes up in price and tell you it's 3%. It's, they call it the Dutch cat inflation. So we are in the inflationary cycle, but officially not. Because everything that goes up in price is taken out of the formula. Very important, why do we need inflation? Have you seen the picture? $53 trillion in debt. Inflation reduces the real value of debt. If you have a debt that you can never repay, or do you think that Japan will be able to repay its debt? Because then we have to try to do Harry Potter book together. <laughs> In 30 years, the population of Japan will be the half of what it is right now. So let's say Japan doesn't accumulate any more debt from today. The debt to GDP will become double. That is what happened with your dollar since 1930. One dollar in purchasing power in 1930 is worth it at the end of the last year, five cents. So you see. That is a deflation spiral. Deflation costs recession. So when you have a deflation, increase the real value of debt. Oh, now you understand Bernanke and Draghi. They are telling you they want to fight deflation because deflation makes the debt flow higher. And they say it positive. If you want to avoid 
inflation, what are you promoting? Inflation. Because you need to inflate the debt. So, stagflation. Situation when the inflation rate is high. Economic rate slows down. Unemployment remains steadily high. So then, what measure, what policy measure does the policy maker have to do? Checkmate. I gave a lecture about that also in 2007. I called the central banks in the world, checkmate. Checkmate. Because whatever you do is wrong. Because you can, if you say I'm going to tame inflation, You'll kill the housing market, you kill the economy because you have to increase interest rates. If you said, okay, forget about the, so the forget about the inflation, just promote the economy, you will destroy all pensions because when you increase the interest rates, you will destroy all savings, you will destroy all pensions. That is what happened in 1980s, but at that time, the population was young. So people were in the, the baby boom was just starting to work. So when Paul Falkers destroyed all, all savings, it was no problem. If they destroy all the savings today and you are at the brink of retirement and your pension fund or your social security fund, so social security, don't forget about that. Your social, social, social security has invested in assets that are not indexable. You will remember this lecture or this presentation. So hyperinflation, so the more you try to avoid it, it happens every time again and over the world because things will get out of hand. Inflation is like genie in the bottle. When it's very simple to open the bottle and let genie get out. When genie is out, it will not get in there. Okay? So they, they call inflation genie in the bottle. So when inflation gets out, very difficult to get it in. So most of the time, it, it will become a, a huge problem. And then it will have to hyperinflation. And over and over again, Argentina, Weimar's Republic, people, the only thing that people will accept as standard is precious metal. My, my, my son, my, my ex first wife is a German. I can tell you what his grandpa told him because he, he experienced the Weimar Republic when people go per day to get the wages because he didn't know what the price of milk will be in the afternoon. And this is what gold and silver did in that period. By the way, these scales are logarithmic. This is what all currency has done since Nixon took us out of the gold standard in 1971. The best performer was the Swiss franc. Wow, can I call it best performance? When you decrease, decrease with 82% in purchasing value. things I got from this Professor Rotman. First of all, we have to change everything. You cannot change what I call the, the era of change and change of era. Everything must change. Not half practice. Everything. So one of the things that is the Green Revolution, the world's expansion and the middle class through globalization, have produced a planet right now that is hot, flat, and crowded. Okay? So a worldwide effort is needed to replace wasteful, inefficient energy practice with a strategy for clean energy, energy efficiency, and conservation in the form of recycling, air and water purification, waste management, reduction of pollution. 
So we all have to start think green and act green. It's not what you think, it's what you do. Then your gift and ICT. So in the knowledge age, logistic has become more and more important. If you see the, if you peel the onion of our economy, our whole prosperity has, is based on logistic. The Dutch use Curaçao as Rotterdam West. Very good. And we got, we got our logistics. The things like 3D printing, clothes, it will change that. Are we prepared for that? So there are four types of logistics. We have the logistic of people, the logistic of fright, the logistic of data, and the logistic of money. We, in the past, this was our strength. This has the dark side, the, 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 the slave trade. It's okay. Uh, we, we proved to be able to do that. Okay, so now what will become important are we doing this? Companies like Russian Workforce is doing a lot of for this because if I can print everything, the amount of transshipment and shipment via Hato and, and the harbor will be reduced. The cloud revolution. The cloud revolution will be the final act in the completion of the PC and internet revolution. It will democratize the forces, bringing immense computer resources to the common man, the average university researcher, the technical producer and designer. So this is the world, like I said, I, I, I told them I'm flying from Dubai, I saw this guy from Dubai to New York, and sitting there in Lufthansa and doing business. My iPad there, I bought 20 MB for 19 euro. Sitting there in Lufthansa, flying to New York, and have Skype meeting, taking document here from there. And so when I arrived in New York, but everything was in place for the meeting. And I was just flying. So you imagine yourself there. No, no airplane in like this speed after me with the full cabinet and so on. 3D printing, a new word has emerged in the vocabulary. Prosumer, if you think I invented that word, go home, search it. Prosumer means producer and consumer, consumer comes together. They have that new word also in Dutch. It's called fabricant. Fabricant and consumer. Europe. And adaptive manufacturing via 3 is a process making 3 density for virtual any shape from any digital model. Okay. It will change everything. That is the last stage. Can you imagine if we are trained to build huge shopping malls, building Home improvement stores. Do you need them? <coughs> and if you go to my personal site, you will see a home that has been printed. We are talking about the youth unemployment. The guy is, is, has learned uh, carpenter and so on. Do will we need that guy? But on the other hand, it will make human capital very, very important because if you can design something, place it on the internet, and people can buy your design and pay with a credit card, so it will lower the barriers for those creative, innovative thinking people because I'm mean, here as a positive thinking person. But you must understand that if we have a youth unemployment problem and we don't tackle our education, it will become bigger because the army of unemployment will increase. Because a lot of things you're going to buy, you will make at home. You will become prosumer. Okay? So 3D printer will transform 
the consumer and to the prosumer. Fabricant. The era of change will lead also to a shift of wealth. Post American growth, Zacharias goes deeper into that also. Economic leadership will go back where it always was. It is a small country, small, well managed country, good governance, with good education, high savings ratio, low gap to GDP, logistics. Very important, those four logistics. Good, no nonsense, visionary, transparent, public, and corporate governance, and creativity. That is where the prosperity will go to. The advantages of Curaçao. Curaçao, our biggest advantage that people don't seem to understand that is that we are part of the Dutch kingdom. I negotiate a lot of laws. Every time when I negotiate in the region and the negotiation is stuck, I will tell them 350 years Dutch rules. If things go wrong, we can go to Kasatsi. Then the Panamanian, the Colombian, will shut them out. Because they cannot offer that. When you sit on the table and you have a Swiss people in front of you, they will tell you 600 democracy in Switzerland. And then not even the Dutch can do that. So that's why Switzerland is so prosperous. It's good governance. It's a very critical part. Okay? So don't underestimate it. Don't want to touch with politics. Don't touch this very strong point. Our ICT infrastructure and knowledge, and like I said, we are the fourth highest ranked in the continent. It can be better. I understood from uh, Ricardo that even 100 MB is possible. Not be available yet. Can you imagine what you can do with 100 MB? With the abundance of sunlight, ground treatment, and deep ocean water, Curaçao can become the green island and showcase for energy for the world. Why do you think Professor Rotman is so interested in Curaçao? If you go to the site of Green Town, you see what's one of the supporters. He gave a lecture at Erasmus two years ago. And he mentioned this again. 20% of energy comes from solar. And Holland, which was ahead, we are comparison with European countries. We are one of the highest. 20%. That was before the laws of putting everybody can put their solar panel. 20% is huge. It can be higher. The first part of the discussion was, might look confrontatory, but it's not. It's just to wake you up. Do you, most of us have a smartphone. Do you know that your smartphone in your pocket has more computer power than all the computers at NASA together that launch Neil Armstrong to the moon and bring it back safely? Do you, do you know that? If yes, how much of this computing power are you using daily in your business? Do you know that currently there are over currently not? April the 8th, over 1.1 million apps for smartphone and tablets. If yes, do you know that in the last 52 weeks, you remember what I told you, that the last 52 weeks, that amount of apps has increased from 700 to 1.1 million? Let me show you the chart. And only this small portion is low quality apps. This is what happened in 52 weeks. So the last stage of the storm and the event, the slow, is steeper. So how many of these apps are you currently using effectively in your daily business? Yeah. 
Dat loopt aging population en decreasing of standards of living aan de traditional tourist market will urge us to refocus. Have we understood the lesson from those millions stuck in Venezuela? Of are we consider it as an outlet? The expansion of the Panama Canal will it will double the amount of the number of ships passing near Curacao. And do we have a plan to make maximum profit of that? Available capital from Gulf state countries can be used for further development and modernization of our logistic, industrial, and, and tourism infrastructure. Have you gone to Trinidad lately? Have you asked yourself who financed the complete refurbishment of Trinidad? Have you went to Dominican Republic lately? There is a tall way going from the capital to Puerto Plata. Do you know who built it? If Dominican Republic can get the money, as I think they have big, belated kind of thing, we as an A, a minus, part of the Dutch kingdom, all the money in the world is available. Plus, how it is a credit rate with stable output, as I SMP is saying that, with our gold and foreign exchange reserves. Uh, I went, I don't know if it's true, I, I hope it's true. The gold, gold comes from public on, their, on the website that we, Curacao, the central bank of Curacao, as market, has the third highest gold reserve per capita. Did you know that? Did you know what that means? And the, the, the question is who are ahead of us? Number one is Switzerland, number two is Lebanon, number three is Curaçao and St. Marta, number four is Aruba, and number five is the European Union. Do you see again the power of the Dutch Kingdom? Yeah. The Dutch Kingdom can say that in the top five, three countries are from the Dutch Kingdom. That gave trust to foreign investors. Tell them. We have enough gold reserves. Show them that. Then your negotiation position will change. Set the shape of somebody of your competitors. What we have to improve is that public, private, corporate, good governance must become a part of our culture. And via national discussion, we must decide if we want to maintain a highly polluted industry in the center of our island, which we want to promote as a tourist destination. In the era of change, in the change of era, knowledge and the of the curve, education are critical success So smart will become, will be well, smarter will be wealthier and the smartest people, the smartest country will be the wealthiest. Thank you. Well thank you.